honestly, I could probably talk about Return of Castle Wolfenstein for hours on end. I consider it to be one of the greatest first-person shooters of all time. And I think that even in 2018, it still kind of stacks up as a great example of when the genre was really at its peak. The first Wolfenstein game to not be developed by id Software, it was instead developed by Grey Matter Interactive and it charged headfirst into the millennium and showed the industry that FPS games were still a force to be reckoned with. Grey Matter Interactive would eventually become Treyarch, the development team who worked on the Call of Duty Black Ops series. And whilst gamers might argue about the quality of those games until they bleed from their assholes, I think the legacy of Return to Castle Wolfenstein is just undeniable. <laughs> Surprisingly, for such an important game for the genre, Return to Castle Wolfenstein didn't really have all that many mods made for it. We didn't get Brutal Return to Castle Wolfenstein or Hentai Wolfenstein, that's for sure. I mean, not yet anyway. Well, we did get a mod that removes all the clothes for the Elite Guard and has them running around in their underwear though, which kind of proves my point. So anyway, when someone suggested I check out real Return to Castle Wolfenstein and told me it's the best life choice they've made since giving up anime, I thought I'd take a look at it and see how it holds up. So what does the mod actually set out to accomplish? Well Sunny Jim, I'm so glad you asked. What the mod is trying to do is modify the difficulty modes for the campaign to give it a more balanced gameplay experience, but also just add in a whole heap of new guns that were probably just left out of the original game due to time constraints and balancing. Now this for me is the highlight of the whole mod which is just coming across all of these new weapons and playing around with them for the first time. Most of which I'm sure FPS fans will probably have seen in other World War II games just countless times. I'm not sure why I'm such a fan of weapons from the World War II era, I'm not a serious gun nut or anything, but there's just such a rugged simplicity to a lot of those guns that makes them appealing. And this mod ticks the boxes and all the kind of weapons that you'd want and expect to see. So the Luger and the Colt Pistol all make a return, there's nothing new there, but sharing the third weapon slot with the MP40 and the Thompson submachine gun is now the MP34, which you first encounter when taking on the leather clad elite guard in the Defiled Church. It actually makes more sense for them to be using the German-made MP34 as opposed to the British-made Sten, which felt oddly out of place in the original. Mechanically, the MP34 feels a lot like the Sten for the most part, with the obvious downside being that it doesn't have a silencer attached, but does seem to do a pretty decent amount of damage, and it doesn't overheat. The Mauser is now replaced with a Car 98K, and the updated weapon model looks a lot more true to life. Like the Mauser, this thing can be equipped with a scope, and I think they've also increased the damage, to the point that it's usually a one-shot kill. Alongside the FG-42 now, there's also the awesome STG-44, which is one of my favourite guns in World War II video games. And later on, you'll also come across a bar, which like the Thompson SMG and the Colt Pistol, has a pretty limited ammo count due to it being an ammunition type that's not used by the Nazis. Now, I think the bar is maybe a bit too overpowered. I mean, I know the thing is a bit of a powerhouse in real life and all that, but in the mod, it just takes out enemies super quickly. I mean, it's not really a bad thing. You don't get all that much ammo for it, and once that ammo is gone, it's usually gone until you start the next mission entirely. But holy shit, does this thing just wreak all kinds of havoc, and I'd say it's probably my favorite new weapon in the mod, just for its sheer stopping power. The next new gun is the M97 shotgun, which like the bar can finish enemies off pretty damn easily. The downside to this thing is that again you get bugger all ammo, and it takes so long to reload you can probably pop off and make a cup of tea before it even finishes. The other thing is that a lot of the shooting in Return to Castle Wolfenstein takes place from medium to long ranges, especially later in the game. So the shotgun doesn't really have all that many instances where you can take full advantage of it. Trying to close the gap and get to point blank range just for the sake of using it can be suicide against certain enemies. But still, it is fun to use, it's just not the one that's going to get all that much mileage. It wasn't even until I almost finished the campaign that I'd noticed I had a service revolver in the second weapon slot, and this thing does have good stopping power too, but considering how late into the game you get it, it's just not all that effective and is beaten out by most of the other weapons. Of course, it wouldn't be a World War II game without the old chestnut, the M1 Garand, and sure enough, they've included one as well, with its trademark ping sound when reloading. You won't see Nazis using this thing for obvious reasons, but now they have their hands on the G43, which seems to do a similar amount of damage, with the upside being that you can reload it whenever the hell you want. Obviously, with the M1 Garand, you've got to fire every shot in the clip before you can reload. The only other new gun is the MG42, which I think might be the same weapon model taken from enemy territory. It's a gun that again like the shotgun in the bar just does a crap ton of damage. Not to mention it overheats like a bitch. I think the cooldown when it's overheated is just way too long, so you'll probably use this thing for short stints and then forget you've got it entirely. I mean, I know I did. 
All of the other guns from the vanilla game make a return. They've just had their models and textures changed to look a bit more realistic. The texture for the MP40, for instance, looks a lot more dark and metallic, and similarly with the flamethrower and the Tesla gun, there's a bit more detail added to the weapon, like scratches and imperfections, to make it appear more believable. Gotta say, I don't really like the replacements for the Luger and the Colt, which I think just makes them look like pea shooters. And somehow the knife looks worse off as well. But I think the best thing about adding in all of these new guns is that it just really does give the shooting loads more options. Now look, there's nothing wrong with the original game, but you were really only ever going back and forth between a few weapons at a time. Usually the FG42 and maybe the MP40 and the Sten, simply because they were effective in combat and you always had a pretty sizable ammo count for all of them. Now that's not to say the Venom gun, the Flamethrower and the Tesla gun aren't any good, but they're a lot more situational than weapons like the FG42 and the MP40. So I'd guess most players didn't really use them as much. The Tesla gun at times is about as effective as farting in someone's general direction, and the wind-up with the Venom gun only made it all that useful against the tougher enemy types. On the subject of the difficulty modes, it's a weird addition in a sense. I mean, Return to Castle Wolfenstein isn't really the kind of game that needed a buff in difficulty. It's easily one of the most challenging of those old-school FPS titles, especially on hard mode, where it pretty much becomes artificially difficult due to the increased health of enemies and their insanely high damage output. On hard mode, you almost need to know the locations of enemies off by heart, especially during those last few missions when you're taking on droves of the paratroopers and the elite guard. What the high difficulty in this mod does, aside from increasing the enemy's effectiveness, is also reduce the amount of maximum health the player has and also lower your ammo capacity. I mean, it sounds neat and all, but I'm just not sure it's all that needed. Like I said, considering the original game is just supremely challenging as it is. The way the shooting works is that you have to fire in short bursts due to the weapon spread, unless you crouch, in which case you can fire pretty much full auto and have near perfect accuracy. The good thing about this was that the AI wouldn't do this, so you could often just safely fire from a long distance and tank them out easily. What it seems the mod has tried to do is somehow balance this out by giving the enemies a bit of an accuracy boost to make them seem less like idiots. As a result though, the problematic areas from the original game, namely some of the boss fights, are even more challenging and kind of unfair to be honest. Not to mention handicapping the player with a 75 or 50 health point cap doesn't really help either. Don't even get me started on those annoying X creatures and the enemies in certain levels with Panzer Shreks and unlimited ammo. But at the end of the day, Real Return to Castle Wolfenstein is an easy sell. If nothing more, it's a fun little weapon pack mod based off one of the best FPS games ever made. There is a few rough ends here and there, some of the modelling isn't quite as professional as it could be. BJ's hands, for instance, just look really bad. And I think some of the weapon models have just been taken from other games entirely, which can lead to some inconsistencies in the design, but overall everything feels really solid and it works the way it's supposed to. If you haven't played Return to Castle Wolfenstein, well, use this video as motivation to go out there and do that, and see what a Wolfenstein game is supposed to be like. Now what we need is a mod that makes Wolfenstein 2 the new Colossus not terrible and will be all set, but sadly I don't think such a mod is even possible.